All right, what's going on guys? It's Jimmy here. There's this new program out that is going to affect millions of Americans and could lead to the new financial meltdown here. This is very similar to what happened back in 2008, 2009, and the 2010 financial crisis. And I'm going to bring somebody on here who is an expert in this area and has dealt with this here before. It's pretty crazy. It's going to affect our entire country, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on this. Okay, so I have here with me today Rick Rucker from Equity CMG. He's actually somebody I have known for many years here today. And I want to start here by showing you guys this story. Take a look here. Okay, so take a look here at this. I seen this and I was pretty shocked, and I knew that Rick was the guy to talk to about this. So as you can see here from MarketWatch, home buyers will now be able to put down as little as 1% on their home. Rocket Mortgage says, Rocket Mortgage is actually um, the kind of sponsor of the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's where it's called Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, right? Yeah, you got it. Rocket Mor Mortgage Fieldhouse, downtown Cleveland. Yeah, it says Rocket Mortgage is offering a new program that allows low to moderate income home buyers to put down as little as 1% on their dream home. And there's going to be some bad stuff about this and some good stuff about this. Take a look at this. Okay, as you can see here, home buyers will be able to put as little as 1% down as a down payment for a home under a new program launched by Rocket Mortgage, a new product by one of the biggest non-bank mortgage lenders in the U.S. called OnePlus will allow low and moderate income aspiring homeowners to buy homes in their area with just 1% of a home purchase price down, the company said, as well as avoid paying what's called PMI, which is shocking to me. It's shocking, actually. Normally, the, the risk is mitigated by having private mortgage insurance on the, on the actual mortgage. How are they even going to be able to get away with not paying PMI, both of which reduces the overall cost of owning a home. To ensure that the mortgages that originated by Rocket are sold and guaranteed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, government agencies that buy home loans as supply funds to banks and mortgage lenders and support the housing sector. Rocket will pay 2% of the borrower's loans the company said their mortgage premium, which is typically required if a home buyer puts down less than 20% of a, of a home, will also be slashed. The CEO of Rocket Mortgage said, quote, I'm very, very excited that we're rolling this out. This is going to be a big deal for a lot of people. They're saying, quote, unlike low or no down payment plans that flourished and resulted in the 2008 crash in the subprime loan crisis, where lenders made loans to people who were eventually unable to repay them, requiring borrowers to meet specific and stringent credit standards will prevent the same scenario from repeating itself again. Well, at least this is what they're saying. Okay, so Rick, you've been in this industry for many years. What are your first initial thoughts? Uh, so my first initial thought is I'm very passionate about uh, getting homeowners, obviously, in, in houses that they can afford. And we got to make sure that no matter what we do, we make sure that we underwrite each individual client based on their specific needs. Uh, the product itself, I think, could potentially be good, but there are some you know, red flags when it comes to not having the mortgage insurance, for instance, that mitigates the risk to the lender. Um, you know, having such low amount down without any um, recourse to that, because a lot of the down payment assistance loans, you have to stay in the house for a certain period of time, et cetera, et cetera, so that you you know the lender can actually make sure that they mitigate the risk or whatever. So um, I think there's pros and there are cons. I do like seeing that it's low to moderate uh, income families, because obviously I'm very passionate about that as a minority man in our space. Definitely. Um, so there's benefits to that, but I also agree with Jimmy, um, you know, as somebody that was in the business in pre 2008, I started in 2005. Um, there are some red flags when it comes to, you know, not being cautious about lower down payment options. So, 
So I can see how this is going to help out some people, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But especially with them not paying PMI, and I get that nobody wants to pay PMI <laughs> because it's literally just kind of like throwing money out the window. I get it. Um, but the problem with it is, and we're, remember, we've already had three major banks fail this year, all worth over $100 billion, two of which were worth over $200 billion. And we've had another major bank, Credit Suisse, that was worth over $500 billion this year. And now banks are kind of getting a little bit desperate to write more loans because nobody wants to, well, at least some, a lot of people don't want to you know, go out and get mortgages and refines right now because it's a little bit higher right now, even though they're already starting to say that loans and rates may be coming down by the end of this year, right? Correct. You got it. First quarter, the predictions are Fannie and Freddie Mac are stating that rates will definitely come down substantially. Um, and, you know, again, the PMI thing, I think, you know, can be a little concerning because, again, as a mortgage lender, you know, our professional job is to make sure we mitigate our risk, but we also don't make people house poor as well. And we set people up to win so that they stay in the house. Um, and when it comes to, you know, FHA mortgages versus conventional, et cetera, et cetera, the, the default rates are so high, especially when it comes to the lower down payment options. That's, you know, my biggest concern when I hear these type of products coming out. But like I, to, to Jimmy's point, there's banks that are failing and the, the whole banking system is built on leveraging. So, um, you know, trying to push more people into loans to increase profitability, et cetera, et cetera. That could be the concern when it comes to, you know, some of these products. So I totally agree with where you're going on that, Jimmy. Yeah. So like, so where's the, you know, what happens if, if, do you think we're going to have another financial crisis here on our hands because of banks doing this? Or do you think we'll be okay? I mean, is this the repeat of, <laughs> You know what we used to do, or what banks used to do years ago, where they used to just do what what I was reminiscing about here, stated income, where they used to um, basically take people's words for their income and kind of the old wild, wild west of everything. And now they're going to do what little to no down. And, and, and I get it that some people are going to say this is the greatest thing. This is actually good for a lot of people because they'll be able to get into home ownership. And um, as long as they do their job, pay their bills, this is really good for a lot of people. But overall, when you put a bucket of millions of people in there, is the system going to break? That's a really good question as well. So my personal opinion is pre-2008, um, there was basically no oversight. And me and Jimmy were just discussing this. Nowadays, I'm licensed, my company's licensed, each loan officer you speak to is licensed, the underwriter's licensed, even our processor who processes the files is licensed. So I don't predict another uh, 2008 happening. And then you have an inventory shortage already. So there's people that are trying to buy homes. There's you know, 20, 30 offers going out on homes. And on top of that, we're an equity rich um, society at this point, whereas back in 2008, 2009, when the market crashed, there was a lot of appreciation, but then all of a sudden that appreciation went down. So uh, I'm not seeing like big default rates. I follow, I track the rental market. I track the commercial market. I track the residential. Um, I'm not seeing another 2008, but I do think that we should be cautious when it comes to lending out some of these products. And again, making sure that for very specific clients, I agree that this product completely makes sense. It's very exciting. Home ownership is the American dream, but we also have to make sure that we set people up to win and not wind up defaulting to Jimmy's point because I'm very yeah. passionate about that not happening as well. And yeah, you know, cause the problem is when the system fails and the fed and, and, the, and the government has to step in and bail out these banks, ultimately it's the, the taxpayers paying for it. Correct. Yeah. And so like, you know, you said you're, you're licensed in like 30 states or something over 30 states or something like that 30 states you got it we're in all the major states so the great state of texas one of my favorite uh states to lend in california everything up the west coast obviously in ohio anything in the midwest michigan um also on the east coast new jersey maryland virginia dc we're in pretty much every state you know so if you folks are interested or you know want to even take a look at your current mortgage situation make sure you're in a good 
position. Obviously, we're here to help you out. Yeah, by the way, I'll put his website uh, down below in the description and uh, the pinned comment if you're looking for a mortgage or a refinance. I I've just literally known Rick for years. Uh, he's somebody I trust. Um, but I want to ask you, so since you're licensed in all these states and you do um, business in all these states for people helping them out, um, what's the market like now? Because we've seen the market was really high with home sales prices. Are we seeing home prices come down or you were saying low inventory? Where's the market at right now? That's a really, really good question. So being licensed in multiple different states and, you know, from the beginning of really my career, uh, I did a lot of business in California in the major markets. And what we think is expensive here in Northeast Ohio isn't expensive elsewhere. So um, when it yeah, comes, definitely. yes, <laughs> you're just like, you know, people here complain when, you know, it's a $10,000 difference where people in California are like, oh my God. Like, They're like, we got to bid 20, 30, 40,000 over just yeah. to even be competitive yeah, with, it, the, with the, the bid, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and it's, it, it's intense in those type of markets. So, but generally speaking, we are seeing a lot of appreciation still the last 24 months, I believe it was 20, 20% plus in appreciation in virtually every market. Now, an excite, exciting statistic I read today is Cleveland, the top, the top four markets out of 50 in the country, Cleveland's number four wow. for being less expensive to buy versus rent. So very good information there. There's also some other states as well. But um, you got you always got to look at it as like rent is 100 percent, whereas whatever the market rate is, what you qualify for, there's that rate. So, you're, you know, you got to look at renting versus buying. Like, do I want appreciation or do I want to give make my landlord rich? And wealth is created through real estate. There's no question about that. It's been proven time and time again. You know, if you look at the Forbes list, it's been created in real estate and finance and retail. So, and I like being in, in two of those myself, which are, re, re, you know, it's a very uh, productive uh, industry to be in. So where do you see home prices going over the next 12 months? Uh, so honestly, I think that the appreciation still is going to happen. Uh, me and Jimmy were having a great conversation about how do you correct the inventory issue that we're seeing. Um, there's a lot of boomers that are downsizing. Uh, a lot of people like myself that are looking for our folks to help them downsize and get into, you know, senior communities or 55 and up communities. So I think that appreciation is still going to be here. I don't think it will be at such a, a rapid rate because I think that that, you know, you know, the boomer market versus the millennial market that's getting ready to come out. I think they're going to offset each other, which is very exciting for me because we are both on that tail end of the millennial. So we will see a lot of opportunity in the next, you know, five to 10 years. For folks to buy, you know, I'm not going to say discounted, but less than what people have paid the last two years and, and buy good you know, properties. And here's this is a really big one because I talk about this on my show. People who watch my show know this because it's very, very concerning, even if people aren't buying homes for people's credit cards and for people buying cars, pretty much everybody. Where do you see interest rates going over the course of the next 12 months and over the course of the next like two to three years? I know this is a loaded question because the Fed can pivot, but wh what are your thoughts on this? Where do you, where do you if you had to guess? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, a lot of mortgage folks like myself follow uh, Barry Habib, who actually is MBS Highway. Uh, uh, we follow like, you know, a lot of the information and data that comes out with him. The information points towards uh, you know, if you, you track CPI, which is, you know, basically, you know, how, how inflation is impacting all of us, CPI report continues to come down. But to Jimmy's point, a lot of times the Fed re reverses their yeah. stance on things. And unfortunately, that keeps causing the interest rates to keep going higher and higher and higher. Now, at some point, which we think we're getting to that point, raising interest rates is not going to offset the inflation. So do I can I predict that in the future um, rates will absolutely drop? I cannot, but one thing I can tell you, and I hate to use the R word, but if recessions happen, on average, yeah. rates drop at least two and a half percent. So good thing to keep in your brain. Again, if you're going out and buying real estate now, I always you know, say that the best time to buy is a year ago. The second best time to buy is yesterday. So buying real estate is how, again, you create wealth for yourself. Um, don't build everything on just the interest rates. You know, you got to marry the house, date the rate in this market. But we know on average, statistically, people in 12 to 24 months refinance anyway. So um, be cognizant of that. But generally speaking, I do believe that, you know, in my heart that interest rates and based on all the data, interest rates will be falling probably around first quarter of 2024. Yeah. And also I was kind of thinking is that um, 
when interest rates go down, home prices might start to shoot back up again. Correct. That's You're also running into that issue as well. And the one thing that we don't want to do because you watched, you know, the normal uh, conforming loan amounts skyrocket. And part of that is because the values went up so quickly and we had less people that would qualify under the jumbo criteria. So they had to increase that minimal not amount on the conforming loan. So it's a never ending balance uh, act when it comes to real estate. You know, we don't want everybody having to buy a million dollar property as their first property. As men of my West Coast uh, friends will probably attest to this, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. their first properties are million dollars and it might be you a know, studio in New York. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a less, less than favorable area or whatever. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I am excited to see what happens. I do think that there's a ton of opportunity in the market. We do have some really cool products like our DSCR product that allows um, people just having a FICO and a cash flowing asset to purchase a house, but that's next level other than this, you know, 1% um, down payment option. So. so, so obviously we talked a little bit about the negatives. What are the pros of this 1% down payment or similar programs like putting only 1% down for people? Jimmy really knows me well if you can't figure it out. I'm a big data science nerd. As um, I am. If, any, <laughs> if anybody knows me, I'm all about the statistics. That's why I don't lean left. I don't lean right. I like to look at the data and look at each issue. Amen to that one. And, you know, we need more people like us that are yeah. kind of in the middle just trying to figure out, you know, the best thing for not just ourselves, but our neighbor, which I'm a big proponent of. So uh, I think the pros, again, to um, real estate and if you compare this is where I was going with the statistics. If you compare the boomers versus the millennials, boomers are nine times more wealthy than millennials. And guess what? It's because of real estate. So those are real statistics, folks. Like buying real estate, you can never lose on. Uh, again, the pros to this program. As long get, as you, you give it some time. You got to give it some time. You yes. know, if you buy a house and you're selling a year or two later, then you, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe exactly. Maybe not. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So don't get, I mean, if you get in the flip game, make sure you're a flipper. But, right, yeah. um, you know, that's a different conversation. Right. We're, we're focusing on, you know, mainstream borrower looking to just purchase their first property. Uh, it absolutely makes sense, again, to create wealth for yourself through real estate. Each payment you make you know, a, a percentage goes down to your principal, that principal in turn goes back in your pocket. So I think that it's very beneficial. Um, and again, comparing different um, generations, you know, the generations before us were wealthy, were nine times more wealthy of us because again, real estate. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a staunch proponent of us going and purchasing. Again, you know, our focus is women, minorities, uh, millennials, Gen Zers, and investors, and that's kind of like our niche market and what we go after. But you're obviously we're you know equal opportunity uh, housing lender, and we look to help everybody purchase. So we just want to make sure that you make the right decision for yourself. You know the one percent down option sounds like it could potentially be good for a large group of people, but we also want to make sure that we're not make, setting you up to fail as well. As long as I feel like as long as people do their job and you know, pay, it's better. It's definitely going to be better than renting. Correct. Uh, but, you know, people got to not bite off more than they can chew because you know, I've been a homeowner for a long time. And the problem is, you know, your air conditioner goes, it's 5,000. Uh, your home goes, if you don't, if you don't file a hail claim and uh, get a new roof from hail damage, roofs are very expensive. You got, you know, it's just always, always one problem or another. I may have to hire Jimmy because that's literally what I tell all my loan officers to tell First time home buyers, listen, it's not just a down payment. If something happens to your house, if a boiler goes out, yep. a septic tank goes, God forbid a septic tank goes out. Heater, or a air conditioner. Issue, yeah, there's all kinds of costs that go into home ownership. And when yeah. you have minimal out of pocket, you don't think of these things. You need a professional loan officer like myself or my team to really walk you through and think of some of the, you know, what ifs. But you know, not only got the home warranties. Yeah. You know, I feel like years ago when I bought my home or, or even my home before this, they didn't have that. But now, now they do have that. So it's kind of like an insurance policy. But so, you know what? Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. As always, I always welcome your comments. I will put uh, Rick's website down below in the comments and I'll do a pinned comment for you. As I said, I've literally known him for over 10 years. Um, so he's he's somebody I trust. This is not a sponsored video or anything like that. Um, but he's licensed in over 30 states. So uh, you could, his phone number will be on his website and he can help you out with refinances, mortgages, or 
questions if you got them. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. Let me know if you want me to have him back on here on the YouTube channel, and I'll keep you up to date here. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below. Click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. So click on this video here to see the foods that are getting banned in the United States right now. Or you can click on this video here to see the attack at the White House and the assassination attempt. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.